Amjad. Dear brothers and sisters of humanity, I begin by thanking you for your patience and waiting through a long afternoon. I'm the, I am the last speaker, so I have the unenviable task of following up uh, my brief speech after so much, um, after so many greater speeches than my own. So I feel undeserving. So greetings of peace and prosperity to all. I'm humbled by the generosity, hospitality, and organization of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. I begin by sharing my abundant gratitude with the conveners and the organizers of the Jalsa Salana, especially Amjad Khan, Majib Ijaz, and many other names and faces, as well as kind hearts. I've had the pleasure and honor of meeting with distinguished members of this community in Houston, where I live. They include Dr. Bilal Rana, who I understand is on the program for this convention, and others. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is renowned for its activism, from educating the public about what Islam is and what it isn't, as Qasim Rashid never fails to do every day on social media, to fighting for justice, peace, loyalty to one's nation, global unity, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community should be proud of the goodwill it has fostered all around the world. It is in this spirit that I offer these few words about my current research and its engagement with the Ahmadiyya Muslim community and its neighboring communities as well. Through the International Quranic Studies Association, an academic society I've co-founded in 2012, I've had the pleasure of convening almost 10 academic conferences. Critical Quranic studies has become an exciting field. Maybe this is because the Quran has so many vibrant and different communities that consider it their scripture. In 2016, I convened a conference entitled Communities of the Quran in the city of Houston. The conference was hosted by the Baniak Institute for the Study of and Advancement of Religious Tolerance, and it included prestigious scholars and leaders of different Muslim and non-Muslim communities who are readers of the Quran. Among its representatives was advocate Mujibur Rahman, a respected member of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. The conference is now a book to be released in 2019 with the same title, Communities of the Quran. Many years ago, I became interested in learning more about different approaches to reading and understanding the scripture. What are the ways in which different kinds of Muslims especially understand their scripture and how does this understanding shape the community? With approximately 1.6 billion adherents, the global Muslim community is anything but monolithic. A systematic and deeper critical theory was needed to explain the diverse nature of this global community. My explorations took me through classical exegesis, tafsir, modern hermeneutics, and soon became fixated upon literary theory. I became interested in reception and reader response criticism. I'm not going to talk to you about this, these academic details, so don't worry. But some of this can be summarized in the tradition that is ascribed to Ali ibn Abi Talib, addressing the Khawarij, the rebels of his day, namely, quote, as for this Quran, it is but writing between two covers, and it does not speak, but it is men who speak through it. End quote. Since the Quran is interpreted in different ways by different communities, it has, to quote a different, American, to quote a different scholar, in this case, namely Stanley Fish, the Quran has several communities of interpretation. Communities of the Quran refers to academic research as well as religious dialogue. The project also seeks to revive the, quote, ethics of disagreement, adab al-ikhtilaf, found in classical Islam, but I would say lost for the most part today. On numerous occasions, the historical record shows that Muslims from different legal, theological denominations, as well as Christians, Jews, Zoroastrians, and others, simply agreed to disagree. Communities of the Quran encapsula encapsulates groups typically outside the pale of traditional Sunni and Shia Islam. Why should a project like, like this cast such a wide net? In short, friends, the crisis of the 21st century demands it. 
The challenges of today's political climate are urgent and greater than our, than our predecessors. The religious, and social, uh, the religious, social, and cultural diversity of the imagined global Muslim community and the richness of its people's traditions are under threat by various forms of extremism and fundamentalism. It is Muslims themselves who have paid the greatest price for the intolerance, violence, and sectarianism undertaken in the name of Islam. This is not something I need to tell the community. The discourses surrounding the so-called war on terror and Islamophobia on, you know, on two ends of the spectrum have only served to polarize both sides of the discussion. As a result, the Quran, the Quran, uh, the Quran sorry, Islam scripture, the Quran, has become increasingly the subject of abuse and misunderstanding. More than ever before, leaders from within and without the global Muslim community have the opportunity to protect the diversity of Islamic civilization and promote religious tolerance as well as peaceful coexistence. We see this leadership today in His Excellency Mirza Masrur Ahmad and your community, of course. The sentiment of protecting Islamic diversity is demonstrated in the words of Mujibur Rahman in his chapter in my book entitled The Quran and the Ahmadiyya Community. He states, the Quran speaks of a living God who guides, who guides humans through continued revelation. The Quran is the living word of God just as the universe is his living act, both unfolding their verities according to the needs of time. The Quran has no conflict with science nor with rationality. It teaches freedom of conscience and rejects all forms of compulsion. Ahmadiyya tradition rejects the prevailing concept of armed jihad, which is a negation of Quranic teaching. Amen to that. Friends, our time together is fruitful but short, so I move to my conclusion. Diversity refers to the practice of local communities, villages, groups, and subcultures, whether they are in Pakistan, Myanmar, the US, wherever. It is the natural order of things. The communities of the Quran Project teaches us, and indeed it has taught me, much about the nuances of local Muslim and non-Muslim understandings of one of the world's most important scriptures. This is a noble cause in itself. However, it also teaches that Muslims are caught between the push of diversity and the pull of consensus. It's different and vibrant communities do not exactly agree upon even the very nature of what the Quran is, a text shared and loved by all. If you're wondering what exactly I'm talking about, you'll have to read the book. Friends, in closing, history teaches us that true consensus is impossible. My hope, however, is that coexistence, fostering dialogue, debate, and promoting diversity is within our grasp. How, you may ask, do we do this? I submit that in this particular case, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has the answer. Love for all, hate for none. Thank you.